In this video, I want to talk about all of the new mobile filmmaking tools and gear that we saw at NAB, from the new Filmic update, to the new LumaFusion update, to a doc from OWC that lets you turn your iPad Pro into a full-featured editing system. So let's jump into it. Real quick, you're watching Video Brand. Special thanks to our sponsors that helped make our NAB coverage possible. Got Massive, which is really handy for sending really large files very quickly. Metricool, which we use to schedule out all of our social media and use it as our social media dashboard. Open Real, which helps create marketing videos really fast and easy. Adspective, which you can use to dynamically insert ads using AI into videos. And Vestigit, which adds invisible watermarking to videos. You can learn more about all our sponsors down in the description below. And now back to the video. What's up everyone, Joey here from Video Brand. So NAB, we did a lot of coverage. You can check out all of our videos here. But let's talk about the specific ones with mobile filmmaking. So first up, we've got Filmic. I'm not really going to dive into that because their main thing was version 7, which they released a few months ago, and we did a complete video about everything new in version 7, so you can check that out over here. Uh, but the one thing that did come out at the conference was they now updated, uh, you can add your own custom LUTs into Filmic, so you could either use them as a preview if you're filming in uh, Log and you want to have your LUTs previewed, or you could bake that into the video as you export it. Also kind of had an interesting chat about where Filmic fits in when the iPhone's built-in software keeps getting better and better. So Filmic, yeah, all around always the kind of the go-to if you need to unlock the full features of your iPhone's camera and have full control over it of the highest image quality. I mean, they've shot professional films on the iPhone using Filmic app. So that's always a go-to tool. Uh, but as far as updates wise, everything that kind of came happened a few months before NAB. But now editing, the other kind of go-to mobile editing app before Final Cut just came out on the iPad, but we'll talk about that in a second, was LumaFusion. LumaFusion sort of been the go-to top app if you need professional level multi-track editing on an iPad, iPad Pro. That's when your go-to app. So some of their updates, they've actually expanded outside of the iPad, and you could use it on some Android tablets and some Chromebooks. But uh, their biggest update for the show was they now have multi-cam editing. Uh, it's a paid add-on if you, to add onto the app if you want to use multi-cam editing. But it was actually pretty cool, pretty cool demo, and a pretty cool intuitive interface of how you can load up your multiple angles and then just switch them on the iPad. I thought that was a pretty uh, clever workaround. So when we recorded this in NAB, this was before there was even any announcements or any inklings that. Final Cut Pro is going to be coming to the iPad officially. And now that I'm recording this, Final Cut Pro has come out to the iPad. Uh, and so it's sort of like, where does LumaFusion fit into that? I would say if you don't use Final Cut already and you don't like the magnetic timeline and you don't like and you're more of a Premiere user, LumaFusion is definitely more of the Premiere equivalent on an iPad if you like the multi-track editing than what you get with Final Cut Pro on the iPad. Now, I've not personally used Final Cut Pro on the iPad because I do not have an iPad Pro and I do not have an iPad powerful enough to run it. Uh, but from what I've seen, I think it does have some clever things. It actually is interesting enough because it does record and give you more control over recording with your, not your iPhone, which I'm pointing at right now, uh, but you can record with your iPad Pro's camera and it gives you recording control features that seem a little bit similar to not as, as expansive as what you get with Filmic, but it's interesting that they have built in the recording feature into Final Cut Pro and unlocked more control over the image quality than what you normally get in the standard camera app. So that combined with it had some pretty cool looking UI features like a jog wheel that you can use to scrub through the timeline. It has not been confirmed yet if you can connect an external hard drive and use that as a separate storage device. Because one of the issues with an iPad is you got whatever storage you purchased with it, it's hard to expand that storage. With LumaFusion, and I'll get into the other accessory that actually makes it even better, is you're able to plug in external hard drives into your iPad and LumaFusion can work off of media on those hard drives. So you expand your, like a real computer, you don't, aren't reliant on whatever your internal hard drive is. Unclear yet if Final Cut Pro for the iPad can do that. So do I think LumaFusion is going to get replaced by Final Cut Pro? I don't think so. I think, like I said earlier, uh, if you are a Premiere user, you're a timeline track editor, then LumaFusion is going to be your solution. Uh, but now if you're a Final Cut Pro user and you're used to the magnetic timeline and you sort of like the way Final Cut Pro works, then now you've got a great option that you can start or you can either completely edit stuff on your iPad or you could start edits on your iPad and then send it off to Final Cut Pro on your desktop. So the third accessory is the Thunderbolt Go dock from OWC. <laughs> This is a fairly large dock. Uh, we'll show some photos of it here, but it plugs into the USB-C port on your iPad. It'll power your iPad. And then this dock gives you an HDMI output. So now you can plug in another monitor, which we have, we saw, we're seeing in the demo. You could run a full screen 
computer display off your iPad. So now your iPad turns into a much more usable display. You can plug in keyboard, mouse, uh, and you can plug in up to three external hard drives. We saw three external hard drives running simultaneously in the demo, and all of those were being were able to be read by LumaFusion at the same time. I don't think Final Cut Pro is at that level yet at all. I'm still not even sure if you can connect external hard drives. So that could also be a huge advantage for LumaFusion where like if you're only limited to the size of your internal storage on your iPad, pretty limiting being able to connect external storage and basically turn your iPad just into the brains and connect the monitor, connect the mouse, connect the keyboard and use all of that with your iPad turns it into a very powerful mobile editing solution. So if you want to have that power on the go, but keep your kit lighter and smaller and leaner, this is a cool option to do that. And then lastly, uh, this is a new tool that's coming out. It's called My Mojo. And uh, I can't help thinking about Austin Powers every time I hear that. Mojo, baby, yeah! But uh, it's actually for, Mojo is for mobile journalists. It's an app where at first when I heard it, I'm like, I'm not sure I see the use case, but then the more I thought about it, I'm like, okay, it kind of makes sense. It's an app slash web portal where people in the field, mobile journalists or whoever else, regular people can upload their files from their phone and those files don't get compressed. Those files get uploaded in the highest quality possible. This actually is a use case that like, I have encountered where it's like I'm trying to get files from people. And if you say go to the file or the video file and you have share or upload, it normally compresses those files, even if you like upload it to Google Drive or some other sources. It either compresses the files or it takes forever or people just like aren't sure like what's happening with their file. Uh, I've had some cases where they're just like, I don't know, it's been taking like forever. So there's always kind of been that little fuzziness. And so my mojo gives a lot more info, ask people for like metadata and uh, file info when they're uploading. Uh, so that all gets stored and saved. And then when it goes to this portal, you can actually have it convert the files into a format that you want on this web portal when you download them. So people assuming sort of the mobile journalist work case here of people in the field recording video, uploading it. And then the studio uh, can get all the files and then have them convert in the cloud if they want to uh, before they send them off to editing or broadcast or wherever those files are going. So a bit of a niche case, but actually I thought, yeah, I could see some of the uses for this, especially working with people that are not tech savvy and they have stuff on their phone and you're trying to get it off their phone in the highest quality possible. And yeah, that's pretty much the updates that we saw in the realm of tools to help mobile filmmaking be better, faster, higher quality. So let me know what you thought of these tools or these updates. And if you do a lot of filming on your phone, I've been trying to do more filming on my phone to test things out and make things more accessible. This is being shot on an iPhone right now. So yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments below. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next episode.